Hey there, my name is Michael Blanc. I will be your instructor today. Today we're going to talk about the six steps to your first apartment building deal. So you're, you're obviously here because you're interested in real estate investing to do, so you're seeking passive income and long-term wealth. And maybe you've, you've considered multifamily, but you kind of dismissed it. And it's, it's really because of limiting beliefs, or maybe you don't, you just don't know certain things. And I have found that a lot of people change their mind a little bit once they see how a first deal can happen. So that's what I want to do today. I want to kind of show you the roadmap or blueprint to your first deal so you can start visualizing this and to seeing what is possible. So I have kind of my six steps here. Step number one is don't sound like a newbie. All right, so this might sound a little obvious, but it's not as important for a single family as it is for multifamily. For single family house, I mean, you can kind of bumble your, your way through, you know, through a, a deal and, and be okay. But multifamily, when you talk to a broker and you're using the wrong words, they will immediately classify you as a newbie and treat you like that, possibly for a very long time. Okay, so, so just educate yourself about uh, basic financial concepts and, and lingo. So that's step, step number one, and that doesn't really cost a lot, uh, even though obviously the more you educate yourself, the, the better you are. Step number two, okay, immediately thereafter of basic education is you wanna get good at analyzing deals, right? So real estate is a numbers game, it, all, it, it is. And, and this is not really a no-brainer. And when I first got started with multifamily, it took me four hours to analyze a deal, okay? That's an, a long time. And that's because I didn't have the right tools or the techniques, okay? But it, now I know that I can do the same thing in 10 minutes, okay? I call it kind of my 10-minute offer. And it will allow you to make an offer and a deal within 10 minutes of getting a, a marketing package from the broker, right? So, um, so that's it. now here's a side effect of getting good at analyzing deals. Right? This is, is it'll increase your confidence. So one of my students, Nick, he just told me the story the other day when he would speak to potential investors, they would immediately ask him about his track record and his experience. And he went to a RIA meeting, and he had analyzed about a dozen deals now. And he went to a RIA meeting. And the investors never asked him about his experience. And we kind of debriefed on this afterwards. And it, he, he felt it was because his confidence level was so much higher. He, was, he, he knew what he was talking about. And they, the objection never came up. So what the side effect of analyzing deals allows you to make more offers, yes. But on the other hand, it increases your confidence. And that's why that is so important. Step number three, obviously, is once you know how to analyze deals, you need to create deal flow. And the best way to do that is via brokers. Now, there's all kinds of other ways you can do it. You can send postcards and yellow letters and pink letters, and, and you can do all this stuff. And those are all fine. But the, the vast majority of deals, and everyone will attest to this, comes from brokers. Okay, So you need to get good at calling brokers, um, contacting brokers, getting them to send you deals, staying in touch with brokers. And that's going to be your, your lifeblood for your deal flow. And eventually, you will get to the point where the brokers trust you enough where they might actually give you an off-market deal. Right now, that's the holy grail of, of deals is to get an off-market deal. So number three is create deal flow, right? Number four, after you've done all that stuff, is learn the secret to raising money. Okay, that's number four. You have a chicken and egg problem. It goes something like this, right? Uh, I don't have a deal under contract, so I can't go out and talk to investors. On the other hand, ooh, now I have a deal under contract, and now I don't have enough time to raise money so I can close. And this this creates a problem for, for, for most uh, people. The solution really is to get commitments long before you have that first deal under contract, right? And then I, I kind of teach this in my secret to raising uh, money. And I've talked about it, uh, you know, on my own site, themichaelblank.com and all, even on uh, an REI classroom on, on flipnerd.com. Uh, check out episode 17. It's called Obtaining Unlimited Money to Invest in Apartments. And the way you find it is go to flipnerd.com and click on shows and at the top search for unlimited money and the episode pops up. So read that episode and hopefully that will uh, address the concern about raising money. Number five is learn to avoid costly mistakes. Now you're gonna make mistakes. There's no way, you, everyone's gonna make mistakes. You just wanna avoid the ones where you lose your shirt, okay? So here are the most common and costly mistakes. Buying in the wrong area, number one. Number two, not correctly analyzing deal and you know, overpaying or doing a deal that doesn't have enough cash flow or not having enough cash reserves when you go into a deal. Uh, number five, not starting, not starting the money raising process soon enough, uh, spending money too soon in the due diligence process. And lastly, not knowing your, your lender's underwriting requirements 
up front. And these are some of the things that you can address proactively by educating yourself, uh, by surrounding yourself with experienced in investors and or um, hiring a coach. And last one, last but not least, step number six is really consider partnering or wholesaling your first deal. Okay, so a lot of people think they have to have the money raised or the money to get you get started in apartment building investing. That's actually not true at all. A lot of people partner or they refer or the wholesale. Okay, it's totally fine part of the strategy. You know, I had a student who brought me a deal in Columbus. He found it. He analyzed it and he was he was getting close to a verbal agreement on a price that made sense. At that point, he started reaching out to multiple people, not just me, other people who were looking for apartment building deal uh, apartment buildings, and he basically negotiated a referral fee. Right, so we negotiated a referral fee of forty five thousand dollars for this for this thing, and 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 so. Don't dismiss that. If you can find a deal, analyze it, and start the negotiation process around the number that makes sense, that is valuable. Someone will pay you for that because it's so hard to find deals, right? So it's very easy for you to get some money up front, and you can say that you've actually done a deal, which you have. So don't dismiss partnering and wholesaling. So I'm hoping that I kind of addressed some of these limiting beliefs, and there's really three of them that I hear over and over again. Number one, I don't have the cash or credit. Okay, you're going to raise money for that. Number two, no one's going to take me seriously without a track record. We talked about that also, is increasing your confidence by analyzing deals. And I don't know how to get started and what to do next. And we talked about that as well. So I hope, uh, I hope this episode kind of dispels some of the myths and limiting beliefs and gives you a map to visualize your roadmap to your first deal. All right, thanks a lot. I'll see you on the next episode. Hey there, and thanks so much for sticking around uh, to the end of the video. I want to give you three things to do in sequence. Let me give you a quick tour of what those three things are, and then I'll show you how to do them. Number one is to download my free ebook called The 10-Minute Offer. It's all about making offers quickly, accurately, to give you confidence about analyzing deals and making offers. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I put out new videos all the time and I want you to make sure you get them. That's number two. Number three is to watch the next the next video in line. All right, so uh, I'm going to go give you a chance to do that right now. And when you click on one of these things, a new tab will open up and uh, for the for the ebook. Okay, so click on the ebook and new tab will open up. The video will stop playing. You can go back to the video and click on step two, which is subscribe to the channel. That will open up a new tab as well. And then three is when you click on the last one to watch the next video in line. That will open up in a current video, vi uh, window. All right, I appreciate you guys, and I will catch you in the next video.